Let's finish this episode off by, again, going to ESPN, who is just, you know, giving us a little bit of life and making us a little angry at some of these lists, naming the top hockey players of the 21st century. Three current Penguins make the list. Sidney Crosby tops it at number one. Evgeny Malkin gets a little bit of respect here at number nine. Eric Carlson at number 16. Two former Penguins also make the list. Marc-Andre Fleury at 18 and Jerome Aginla at number 20. There's one major omission here. Uh, again, I don't have really much of an issue with where the five Penguins I just mentioned are. Crosby, clearly number one to me. Malkin at nine, I think, fits. Carlson at 16 sounds about right. Flurry at 18 sounds maybe a little low, but again, I'm not going to argue too much over it. Again, let 20 fits. There's one huge omission and somebody that was omitted from the top 100 athletes of the 21st century. Horo, you had pretty strong thoughts on that omission not as much on this one but what do you think about the fact that Yarmir Yager is nowhere to be found on any of these um it's interesting it really is some of the it, it especially when it comes to the top 100 quote professional athletes um of the 21st century I mean he's he's probably the only one that has played all 24 years of the new century uh, professionally, full through, even it's even if it's in it, even in Europe, it is still a professional athlete being played, still a professional sport being played over there. Um, as for the NHL one, I get it's the NHL rankings. Maybe you don't count him in because he didn't play. Blah blah blah. He still played 14 years in this league, uh, 14 seasons in the NHL, and put up bomb numbers in as an aging, aging, aging veteran too, no less. I mean, I think. I believe he turned 30 in in 2000 if not a couple years like a year or two after. Mm -hmm. uh, so he did all those numbers all the numbers that we'll bring up, all the things we dis that we'll discuss in his 30s, which is rare. Where we cover the penguins where we're discussing our best players being 35, 36, 37, 38 mm -hmm. years old. Um and if and the fact that Yager not only played all through his 30s at the top of his game, was a heart nominee in one of those seasons, uh, and then played in at the NHL level deep into his 40s and was still mm. solid enough to produce for, okay, fine, the Panthers weren't that good, but he was still solid enough to produce on an NHL team. Mm -hmm. That's something. And like I, like I mentioned, it's been the year of, year of Yager, but yeah. I think this is a, uh, you're right, another big omission for sure. I ran the numbers, which is pretty easy when you go to hockey reference because oh, yeah. you just click the years uh, since to the 2000, 2001 season. And so this is leaving out the early portion of the year 2000 because it just didn't have the time to do that. But since the yep. 2000, 2001 season, Yarmir Yager has had a not borderline, a Hall of Fame career. And that's taking out an entire decade of his career where he was winning Art Ross trophies and Hart trophies and yeah. Stanley Cups. But since 2000. 1,008 games played, 379 goals, 963 points, one Hart Trophy, one Lester B. Pearson Award, one Masterton Trophy. He played three of those seasons overseas from 36 to 38. Yep. Think of where Crosby's at right now. 36, he just put up, what, 93 points? Yeah. Yarmir Yager from 36 to 38 was not in the National Hockey League. He played in the National Hockey League till he was 45 years old, and he's still playing to this day in Czechia, and he has so much lore surrounding him, and people have such a high respect for him that I had people honestly asking me if the Penguins were going to sign him for the rest of the season after that February 18th game when he came out and practiced. They so said, oh, could they? Could they? Could they bring him back? Is he? I mean, they need bottom six scoring. He still has his shot. He's 52 years old, and there's people that are earnestly believing that he could still play in the league today. How is this guy not a top 25 of all NHL players in the 21st century? I understand that some of those later years, you mentioned Florida, when he was 42, 43, 44 years old, he wasn't lighting the world on fire. But you have to be at a certain level to be still desirable at that age for NHL teams. Yarmer Yager was, and, and he was still a good bottom six piece towards the end of his career mm -hmm. in the NHL. And again, I, I have to say in the NHL, because his career is still, still going, going on in Czechia. I think it is crazy 
that he was not on either of these lists. He 100% should have been on the top 100 athletes, and he 1,000% should have been on the top 25 NHL players. Let's also consider those years. I said, yeah, it was he was with the Florida Panthers and fading into the end of his NHL career. Forgot he put up 66 points in 79 games played as a 43-year-old. Yeah. Uh, won the Masterton that year. Uh, and was seventh in heart voting, it looks like, according to Hockey Reference. The next year at now 44 years old, numbers went down a bit. He had 46 points. That's not bad still. Played all 82. Played all 82. I just, I not, I'm not many minutes removed from saying Evgeny Malkin shouldn't be a Penguin anymore if he's playing past the age of 40. Yeah. <laughs> like, but Yager, if, if you told me, if, if you told me Yarmir Yager at the age of 44 is going to play all 82 and put up 46 points. Oh yeah, give me that. I'll take that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's kind of the different. That's a different level of star power that I'm mm -hmm. putting Yager, at least in this, in the grand scheme of full careers, over Malkin. Which absolutely, he's the second all-time leading scorer in, in the NHL for a reason, and a lot of that reason was the work he did in the 21st century. Now again, it's not the same as you know, four straight Art Ross trophies, three straight to end the to end the 90s. Actually, sorry. And then the, to kick off 2000, 2000, 2001 with one of them, with one for himself, mm -hmm. but just unreal stuff. And as he aged, he still put up good fights in, in, for some pretty good teams. I mean, that New York Rangers team that the Penguins had to face in the playoffs in 08 was nuts. Yeah. And it was led by Yager. Uh, and then Yager had another chance to cup, I believe, with the Bruins in 13. Uh, had more chances at, you know, had some pretty good teams. He came, whenever he came back with the Flyers, I believe that was a good team. And uh, so much lore around Yager that hey, you're right. Mate, I don't know if he could cut it in the NHL these days. He's trying to play all every. I don't know how many games they play in, in Czechia. He's trying to play every game this season in Czechia mm -hmm. at 52. <laughs> madman, he's a yeah. madman, and uh, does deserve every piece of recognition he gets, and deserve these these little recognitions too. Again, these lists don't mean much. No, but. It's, but it's crazy still. I mean, this yeah. is this is the TV provider for the National Hockey League, the primary television provider yeah. for the National Hockey League. And yet they still don't recognize the greatness that is probably one of the top four still players in the history of the National Hockey League. Here's how here's how I rank the Penguins Mount Rushmore in order. Lemieux, Crosby, mm -hmm. Yager, Malkin. Ooh, I reversed those last two, but okay. Really? Oh, Malkin stuck around longer and Malkin. has put put up more points. If yeah. if if Yager stuck around, and even another couple seasons doesn't have to stay his whole career, but even just a couple seasons, uh, maybe it's a different conversation. But it's the way Malkin kind of has stuck around, has now gone through contract negotiations, mm -hmm. uh, and has surpassed the numbers tests. Yes, that's a big one. Uh, that's just what does it for me. Yeah, longevity and commitment yeah. to the organization is very important. And I'm not saying it is a wide gap between Yager and Malkin. And I right. think mainly when I'm saying that, I'm thinking more of at the height of their powers, who was the better player for the Penguins? Yarmir Yager yes. was captain. He carried that organization when Mario Lemieux was dealing with everything that he had to deal with, his retirements, his injuries, his illnesses. It was Yager. Malkin has done that in, in shorter spurts. For Sidney Crosby, thankfully, there hasn't been as much, but there has been times. I, I think the, the point is, you know, Yager belongs in those conversations. And when you're looking, if that is the Penguins conversation alone, how do you not, whenever you open it up to wherever else Yager played, put him up there alongside guys like, you know, Nick Lidstrom, guys like at least Joe Thornton. Like, come on, Joe Thornton's whole career, he's a Hall of Famer, but yeah. His career was, you know, again, Yager since 2000, 2001, over a thousand games played, almost a thousand points, and Hart, a P Pearson, and a Masterton. I mean, how do you not include that in the top 25? And the other thing I'll mention here before we go, and if you have any other gripes with this list, obviously I'll let you unleash that. Martin Brodeur got heavily disrespected in that list. Greatest goaltender of all time in my eyes and again that is a debate for another day but i see him as the greatest goaltender of all time below nathan mckinnon and patrick kane i mean kane at four is ridiculous in its own right i mean over, over lidstrom really mckinnon i think was too high as well i like nathan mckinnon but top i think he was sixth or seventh 
he was above Brodeur, and I think that was just kind of ridiculous. So I think a little bit more respect for Marty Brodeur and a lot more respect for Yarmir Yager needed uh, at ESPN headquarters right now.